Good evening. Tonight, we are going to talk about the Bigfoot UFO connection. This is something that has been brought up to me many times over the years. I did a video on this a while back, and my opinions are always changing, my thoughts are always changing, I'm always getting new information, and I think it's something that we need to talk about. And I think that um, the way things are changing, the way things that are coming up, um, it's something that we should all be aware of when it comes to not only UFO encounters, alien encounter, cryptozoological encounters, and Bigfoot encounters, but how we look at the whole paranormal world. And I will say in the past, if somebody was a Bigfoot researcher or enthusiast or had an encounter and wanted to know more information, and they started talking about UFOs, that um, they were often shunned and pushed out, you know, oh, those are the real weirdos, we're into hard fact science, Bigfoot research, this is a flesh and blood creature, it is an undiscovered primate of some kind, this is purely scientific, and UFOs and aliens and all that kind of stuff is complete hogwash. Well, it's kind of turned around, it's kind of come the other way, and I've got good contacts in the UFO world. I know quite a few of those guys, and I find it fascinating. Um, and it's really kind of come around in the last few years. I mean, even five, ten years ago, like I said, one really wouldn't talk to the other. The other person was really um, shunned. And I don't think that that's fair, because I think there's so much commonality between what Bigfoot, um, people who have encountered Bigfoot, people who have had sightings of Bigfoot, people who have... Um, being face to face and interacted with them and there's a lot of psychology and there's a lot of events and things that happen to them that's very similar to what people report when they're contacted by aliens or um, if not even aliens just ufos as in the sense of an unidentified flying object or they saw a, f a craft that maybe didn't look like or behave like any modern aircraft whether it be helicopter or fixed wing aircraft and it's not explainable so, when we talk about this, I will say there are some reports, some really out there reports. Um, and what we also have to consider that both people in the Bigfoot world, when they get too close to Sasquatch, when they have really good proof, or maybe even possibly shoot one, or people who are abducted by aliens or have really good proof or footage or something that um, proves or they have information on the UFO phenomenon, they get approached by a man in black. Um, very similar to what Bigfoot people also get encountered. And I think that's interesting how they're both to, seem to be some kind of a cover-up, somebody out there, some entity, some organization trying to cover up the truth. Now in the Bigfoot world, it's supposed to be kind of a good cop, bad cop kind of a thing, and in the UFO world, it's kind of a men in black type thing. But all across the United States, people are seeing Bigfoots. People see them every day. People have them on their property. People see them running across the roads. People have very benign encounters. People have violent encounters. And in all these encounters, stories come out of some very fantastical things. Bigfoot cloaking, Bigfoot having glowing red eyes. Now I don't mean eye shine, I mean they're actively glowing like two red lights. Um, Bigfoot doing other strange things, being able to mind speak. And then when you look at missing 411 and some of the missing people across the United States, and you look at the sightings maps, these are not unlike some of the things that, you know, people report about aliens, how they just appeared in their room, they suddenly appeared on a spacecraft, they were, um, saw these craft and these beings do strange things, things that go against the laws of physics. And... Now, I'm not going to venture out there and say that Bigfoot is an alien, because we simply don't know that. Uh, but that's something that some people have postulated and said that maybe that's the reason for the cover-up, is that they are something unnatural. And if you look at the sightings maps, here we have one of the USA. And, um, you know, it's very obviously at population centers, you have to have mountain, you have to have a mountainous areas and areas for where they could get away with it in areas from where they could hide. And also some of these remote areas, often in desert, you also get UFO encounters. And I don't think that that's a coincidence. I think when you also look at other things like 
Skinwalker Ranch, and what's been brought to my attention that I can't necessarily talk about all the details, but these areas of high strangeness seem to be everywhere. And they seem to have periods of dormancy, periods of activity. Now, some people said that these are portals to another dimension, and people have seen Bigfoot-like creatures come through them, and also people have postulated that maybe aliens are more interdimensional or extra-dimensional coming from another dimension, or this is their way, maybe not necessarily able to come from other stars flying directly at us, but, you know, because that would take a long time, even at the speed of light, maybe they have some way of finding a wormhole and jumping through realities, and maybe sometimes these Bigfoot creatures or other creatures come through these portals, or very on the surface of it, if you look at aliens, the possibility of aliens existing, like all the stories of them abducting people, maybe they see Sasquatch in the woods and they think, well, this is another type of people because maybe they're abducting cows and doing experiments on people. Why wouldn't they want to abduct a Sasquatch and figure out what these things are about? And there are also different theories about some of these spacecraft. Um, you know, when they come through these portals, that they're maybe using Bigfoot as like a spy or something. They're using some kind of mind control. There are Bigfoot stories about people who have been habituated with them, um, saying that when the Bigfoot reach a certain age that they go with the star people. Uh, I've heard that in a couple different, um, very kind of out there stories, but, you know, nonetheless, there are reports of people who had... Um, very strong ties to a Bigfoot clan or family and their family had ties with them and they realized at a certain age what their description was the star people or aliens would take them away and bring them back and I know that sounds incredible but it's certainly a fascinating story if you wanted a, a very stealthy spy to live on the edge of human society and maybe be able to grant them or possess them or give them some kind of an ability to hide and move around and live off land, live off nature, hunt and survive and be kind of the most, you know, self-sufficient drone you've ever seen. Uh, maybe that's one possibility. One of the other things for Bigfoot is we seem to have such a variety. Now, one of the things that I'm fairly well known for is my 10 types of Bigfoot, which is a branching off of the um, four types of Bigfoot, you know, the type one being a big patty type, the type two that you see in the middle there being very chimpanzee-ish, a little smaller, a little more aggressive, typically seen in the south. The type three, the gugwe type with a snout, very big overgrown baboonish. Um, but, you know, these are very rare and they're kind of along the, between the Mississippi and Missouri River. And then they're being more of a relic hominid type that there's a lot of similarities to the great ape species, a striking amount, almost like maybe there was, and some people guess, that there was a true blood Bigfoot, ones that were here natively and been a long time, and some other type that had been manipulated. And for what reason and for what cause, I don't know. But when they bear an uncanny resemblance to overgrown humans and to different great ape species, and kind of makes you wonder why is that you would would natural processes of evolution and separation and divergent evolution create these type of things or is there some more of a design to it now some people blame the government but i think uh, our government hasn't really been around long enough so i think you have to look at other species if they would be indeed responsible for it also um some of the very controversial bigfoot dna evidence um, if you're a proponent of that, a Melba Ketchum study and some of the other ones is that they are half human and half something else. Well, that was just one particular type that got sampled. Maybe the other ones are a little more true blood or pure born and other ones are more genetically manipulated. This is just one sample of one type of one questionable report. But if it wasn't us that did it, if it wasn't mankind that did it, or if it wasn't mankind in in any kind of modern sense because people have been seeing Sasquatch for thousands of years and seeing these varieties of them for a long, long time. Uh, maybe it is some other kind of um, outside influence. And then you also got to think about some of these other creatures people are seeing in the woods, like this strange rake creature people are seeing more and more, like all the time. I'm getting more and more reports, people telling me about them. Now, to me, these things always struck me as more demonic, and maybe there's a connection to aliens there. I know some people think aliens are really more demonic, but 
if they're using these portals to travel across time, to travel across space, maybe they're bringing stuff with them intentionally, unintentionally. Maybe there's different dimensions and some of these creatures come from different dimensions. Maybe these creatures themselves have the ability to open and close portals or vorti or vortexes. That's kind of a theory. Um, but when you just look at the strangeness of what people have seen in cryptozoology, here's a very frightening picture of a gugwi. Um, it seems like nature comes up with some pretty horrifying things, but to have an eight, nine, ten foot tall man-like creature with long claws and sharp fangs and a protruding snout that with a very, very bad distemper, this almost goes beyond what you would expect nature or God or whatever belief system you have for our creation to come up with. And to the fact that this was somebody trying to make a soldier either in modern times or millennia ago to protect something, um, you know, I think more than just wild crossbreeding. And I think a lot of times when you get into the alien theory, um, possibly as our creators and possibly maybe having involvement with ancient um, ancient civilizations here on Earth. I mean, that's a real possibility. I mean, one of the strangest ones out there that's very popular these days and a lot of people are seeing are the Dogman. Where did these things come from? You know, there are some theories out there that maybe like an ancient Atlantean type civilization or Sumerias came up with the um, Bigfoots as a laborer and the Dogmans are like a guardian of certain areas. And then there's areas of high strangeness, areas with portals that seem to have lots of Bigfoot activity and then other things around there at the same time. It almost seems to me that the Bigfoots are trying to throw acorns and trying to knock on trees and trying to scare us away from certain spots and certain areas because maybe uh, what we think of as aliens or extraterrestrials or UFOs and some of these bright lights and orbs are coming through these portals and then maybe some other creatures come and go and I've heard reports even out there there being good portals where benign creatures and benevolent creatures come through and then bad portals where things like the rake come through and uh, maybe Bigfoot and Dogman are kind of these sentient earth creatures that are here to guard protect maybe keep, keep things at bay um, but they're still able to, de to defend themselves and live on their own maybe they have some kind of advanced directive we don't know about um, or maybe they're just some kind of pre-human some kind of Neanderthal blend with humans that the aliens tampered with and from time to time they come and check on their experiment and they abduct them the same way they abduct us uh, because for me as time goes on Sasquatch is more and more human in their activities, the way they conduct themselves, the way they do things, other than their beastly, hairy, giant appearance. And then people want to think of giants in biblical sense. I'm just saying giant as in something large. And then you got to think, well, who created us? Where did we come from? Is it God as we know it made in his image? Is it somebody pretending to be God? Is it, you know, were there ancient aliens involved or recreated in God's image perfectly and something manipulated us, especially when you look at different um, versions of us and earlier things, you know, like the Cro-Magnums going all the way back to our fossil record to the Australopithecines and Homo habilis and Homo erectus and Neanderthals. And then you look at Sasquatch and it kind of makes you wonder who's pulling the strings. Is there some kind of genetic manipulation? Where does God fit into all this? And those are some really big questions, but when people say, hey, I saw a bright light in the sky in an alien craft, and then I saw a Bigfoot appear, or when people say, hey, um, or when you hear abduction reports of someone being on a spacecraft and the next table next to him being examined is a Bigfoot, I've heard stuff like that before too. And I don't know, is it something... Is it something, you know, like rudimentary, like I said, where they're just abducting them the same way they abduct us because they're curious about life on Earth? Or is it something much deeper and sinister? There's so many questions that we don't know. Uh, but when somebody necessarily brings up UFOs and wants to tie them in with Sasquatch, I am not against it. I think that they are all part of the bigger mystery here. And I think there is a reason why the government's trying to cover this up. I think they're all intrinsically linked and I think they're all kind of under the same umbrella. Um, the same way you could probably tie ghost and um, demonic possession and all that other kind of stuff into this too. Um, 
So I just wanted to thank you guys. I know this was a bit of a rant and a bit of a stream of consciousness, consciousness type thing, but I really do think there's something going on between these bright lights in the woods, the orbs, the UFOs people see in the sky, aliens as people report them, government bases, and then Sasquatch, these strange beasts that people see in the woods that are very human but aren't humans. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you like what you see here, please hit subscribe. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And stay safe in the woods, folks.